Welcome to The Unrealist. This is Chris. This is an update to a previous video I posted which showed how to create a TV glow effect. Unfortunately, the technique I showed in that video no longer works in Unreal Engine 4.18 and later. The new technique I'm going to show will achieve the exact same effect and work in modern versions of Unreal Engine. I want to give a special thanks to viewer Joseph Lemons for his patience and persistence in getting me to re-record this video. Sorry it took so long, Joseph. Here I've put together a simple scene we can use. One thing I want to point out is that if we zoom back in this scene, you'll see I've placed a light, labeled work light, just to help us see things in this very dark scene while we're working. I've also marked the light as actor hidden in game. So if we play our game, you'll see that it automatically turns off and the only light is the side table light. The first thing we need to do is get a video playing in our scene. So I'm going to import a video file into this movies folder that I've already created in my content browser. Epic recommends that you store video files in a special folder called movies under your content folder. This way it will be picked up by all platforms. So we've imported our movie and that's all we have to do there. Now we need to create a media player to play back our video file. So I'll right click and choose media and media player. And we're prompted with a dialog that asks if we want to create a video output media texture. We'll choose yes. You almost always want to select this option because you can use that to display the video in the 3D environment. We'll rename the media player to MP underscore TV player. And you'll notice that it automatically created that texture for us. And to see that texture in action, I'll just open the media player And I'm going to turn on the loop option so that our video continuously loops. And while you're in the editor, you can just double click on a video file and it will play in the media player. Now, if we switch back to our scene, you'll see the media texture updating. Now we'll drag and drop that media texture directly onto the TV screen. And Unreal Engine creates a material for us automatically and applies it to the mesh. So things appear to be working in the editor, but let's try playing the scene. When we play the scene, you'll notice that the video doesn't play. That's because when I double clicked on the video file in the media player before, it only affected the editor. We have to actually start the video through code in order to have it play in our scene. To do that, I'll open the level blueprint. And I'm going to add a variable called media player. We'll set its type to media player, object reference, and then compile our blueprint. Once we've compiled, you'll see we have a default value property. So we'll set that to the media player we created earlier. Now we'll get a reference to that media player variable. And to play a video, we need to call a function on that object called open source. We'll hook that up to our begin play event. And then we just have to tell it what video file to play. That's all we need in our level blueprint. I'm going to start the video again to show you one more thing we need to change before we can play our scene. Even though our video is playing, if I turn off the work light, you'll notice that we can't see it on the screen. That's because we need to make one modification to the material that was created earlier. By default, the material that's created is just a regular lit material with the video texture feeding the base color. We need to change that to the emissive color. There, we can already see that the TV screen is brighter. Now if we play our scene, you'll see that the video is visible. But we still don't have a glow yet, so let's work on that next. 
One of the key ingredients to creating our glow is having access to the content that's displayed on screen. To capture that content, we're going to use a Scene Capture 2D component. I'm going to position it aligned to the TV screen, and we'll worry about tweaking this position a little later. And then I'll pull it back from the TV a bit. If you look at the details pane, you'll see that this component works as a camera and has all the settings you would expect a camera to have. One setting we're going to change is the projection type from perspective to orthographic. One advantage of using orthographic here is that the distance of our camera from our subject doesn't matter. The amount of our scene that is captured by the camera will no longer be dictated by field of view, but rather by the ortho width. We'll lower that width a bit for now, but we'll adjust it later. Our scene capture has a property called texture target. This is the texture to which the camera will record what it sees. So let's create that texture. We'll go to materials and textures, render target. And we'll rename it RT underscore TV content. We'll drag that to the texture target slot. And let's start the video again to see the effect. As the video plays, you can see that it appears in the middle of our texture, rendered in real time. But it is a little small. Let's open that texture to take a closer look. We can get a hint of what the camera is seeing here. It's recording our floor plane, the table that the TV's on, and the TV itself. If we turn off the alpha, you can see the color that it's capturing as well. We don't really need our camera to capture all of those elements. So we can optimize the capture a bit by changing the render mode from legacy to use show only list. Now I can go to the show only actors array, add an element, and I'll use the eyedropper to select just our TV set. Now, if we look at that render texture, you'll notice that only the TV is being captured. Now let's change the area that's being captured so that it fills the whole frame. With my scene capture actor still selected, I'm gonna scroll back to that ortho width value and lower it significantly. So here we're almost filling the frame and this gives us a chance to center the camera a little more closely. It doesn't have to be perfect. There, that's close enough. Now we'll crop in a little bit more and we have a fully filled frame. For our next step, we'll add a spotlight to the scene to serve as the glow coming from the television. I'm going to increase the intensity a bit. You'll notice one property of spotlights is that we can assign a light function to them. A light function is just a material, but it's a special kind of material that allows us to attenuate the brightness of the light. It's almost like putting a stencil or slide in front of the light. So let's create that material. I'm going to call it LF for light function, TV glow. We'll open it for editing. And with the main node selected, I'm going to change the material domain from surface to light function. You'll notice when I do that, it limits us to just an emissive color pin. Any value we feed into here is going to attenuate the brightness of our light with a value of one, meaning no attenuation, and a value of zero, meaning completely dark. Now we'll hop back to the content browser to grab a reference to our TV content texture. And we'll plug that texture right into the emissive color pin. Now we'll drag that light function material right onto our spotlight. I'll play our video so we can see the effect. 
you'll see that the spotlight is now acting as if it were a projector, projecting the image of the TV wherever we're pointing it. You'll also notice that it's only in black and white. We'll address that in a moment. Let's position this light as if it were coming directly out of the TV. And we'll also increase the outer cone angle as large as we can. You may notice this word preview in our environment and the red prompt that we need to build our lighting. Let's do that so we can see the full effect. I'll turn off the work light so we can see the effect better. So now you can see that the TV looks like it's projecting into the room, but not in a realistic way because there's too much detail. So let's look at ways we can lower that detail. One way is to lower the resolution of our render target. This has the added advantage of using less video RAM, which will help performance. Let's close that and take a look at the light function again. Now you'll notice our light functions black, a little trick you can do is undock the window, and if the video is playing, it will now update in real time. So if we look at this, you can see that it definitely did reduce some of the detail in the image, but it's still not enough. So to reduce detail further, I'm going to add a node called the Spiral Blur node. This node allows us to blur a texture. You'll notice that if I try to connect the texture sample directly to the spiral blur, it won't let me because the types are incompatible. The spiral blur expects a texture object type. So we'll add a texture object node, and it automatically chose the right texture because we happen to have it selected in the content browser. So I'll connect that. We can get rid of this other node because we don't need it. and we'll plug the result into our emissive color. There, now you can see there's definitely some blurring going on, but it's still not enough. We essentially want so much blur that it averages out the color in the frame. Luckily, this is easy to do. I'm just going to add a value of one using the constant node and plug it into the distance input. Now you see that we get something very close to an average color across the frame. Now if we turn off our work light and take a look, you'll see that we get a much less detailed effect. And this might be perfect for some game effects. But it's still too much detail for me, so we're going to make one more adjustment. We'll open our light function material. And instead of using the whole UV space, I'm going to add a constant two vector with a value of 0.5.5 and plug it into the UV input. This tells our material to always sample from the exact center of our blurred texture. Now if you look in the preview, you see a very flat color, which is exactly what we want. And now our glow is perfectly undetailed. But it's still only one color. So let's fix that next. We know that to create images on a computer screen, we can use the component values of red, green, and blue to create any color. We're going to leverage that fact in our setup here. We're going to create red, green, and blue spotlights that combine together to give us the colors we want. So with our spotlight selected, I'm going to set its color to pure red.
and we'll rename that actor to be reflective of its new condition. And we have to make one adjustment to the light function material. It's currently feeding a full color value to the emissive output. But we can tell it to use just the red channel by using a component mask node. We'll just make sure that red is the only checkbox selected. And we'll rename this to be descriptive as well. So there we have our red light with the red glow light function applied. We'll duplicate that light and rename it to TV Glow Green. And I'm going to nest it under the red light just so that we can more easily move them as a single unit. I'll set this light to pure green. And now we need to create a new light function material. So I'll duplicate the original. Rename it. And change the component mask from red to green. Now we'll apply that to our green spotlight. And we'll repeat the process one more time to create a blue light. Now we'll play the video again and notice in our content browser, you can actually see that the red, green, and blue light functions are all giving different values depending on how much red, green, or blue is in the image at any one time. Back in our scene, you'll see that because we've added new lights, we need to rebuild the lighting one more time. Now we'll play our scene, and you'll see we get the exact effect we were going for. We get nice, accurate brightness values and accurate color. That's it for our updated version of the TV Glow effect. If you found this video useful, please give it a like. And as always, if you have suggestions for future video topics, please leave them in the comments. I hope you'll consider subscribing, and until next time, this has been The Unrealist.